Hi guys, my name is Ben and welcome back to the Pride of Villa. Following one of the comments that we um, discussed from one of our transfer update videos, one of the people was discussing about how Villa hasn't really been the same since the Martin O'Neill era. This was from 2006. Um, and he was discussing about how, you know, the players that we're signing now, they're not of the same calibre. And it just shows how much we've fallen since 2006. And I thought it'd be quite a good video to see why Aston Villa hasn't probably been the same since that time period. Or perhaps why the Martin O'Neill era was a lot better for a lot of us fans. So that's what I'm going to be discussing today. I'm going to give you my thoughts on that situation. Why I personally believe that Martin O'Neill is one of the better managers that we've seen in the past few years. So if you all enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Obviously, use our discount code PRIDAVILLA at fatalgrips.com and you'll gain those lovely gaming accessories for all your hardware. But without further ado, let's get started. So, after a poor run of form with David O'Leary, it was decided that a new manager was needed to steer the helms of Aston Villa. And when Randy Lerner came in, it was decided that Martin O'Neill would be the man to take the place. He would spend four years with the club before the start of the 2010 and 11 Premier League season. With Martin O'Neill, we would go on to finish sixth place in a row of three times. This was a very good time period for Aston Villa because when Randy Lerner came in, it was obvious that the idea of gaining Champions League football was a massive priority for us. So we were spending a lot of money and we were bringing in big names such as Ashley Young, Gareth, not Gareth Barry, Ashley Young, um, John Carew, Stylian Petrov, um, I think it was Brad Friedel, Carlos Quayler, um, there was a lot of big plays coming in at the time and the ambitions were really high for Aston Villa to reach that um, elusive Champions League spot. And after, you know, continuously finishing sixth position um, from 2006 to 2010, it almost felt like just a matter of time before that was going to happen. But as those years went on when we didn't achieve Champions League, um, Randy Lerner would tighten the financial status that Aston Villa had and you know, reduce the amount of money that Martin O'Neill could spend on the club. Um, and he was getting to a point where he didn't feel the club was going any much further than being sixth place. Um, obviously, because there was a lack of money going in, there wasn't much to work with there. So he had to leave the club in 2010. And that's when we went through a period of weird managers from, um, oh, I want to say Gerard Julio. Um, I want to say him. Um, the guy who went over from Blues to Aston Villa. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. But we went through a series of poor managers. We then obviously went on to Paul Lambert, who would stay with Villa for quite a little bit, working on a younger and uh, less financial cost team. Um, considering Ryan Lennon was still in charge at that point. He would leave the job. We would then see the likes of Paul Lambert. Um, Remy God, Robert Di Matteo taken over, but this was at the time when Aston Villa were massively declining and would end up in the championship. But the point of this video is to discuss why is it that period, 2016-2010, that's talked about so much? Why do we you know, see it as such a good period in our Aston Villa career? I mean, mine and Nathan's case, one of the better times of um, Aston Villa. Well, simply put, it's that positioning, finishing sixth three times in a row. That's something we don't see as of nowadays because, you know, as of recording this, um, as Seville are currently, I believe, oh, I want to say 17th. It's not 17th, it's like 19th or something. They're in the bottom three of the Premier League um, and obviously COVID-19 has currently put a pause on Premier League football. Um, but it was actually only a year ago as of uh, today where Aston Villa won the championship playoff final against Derby to be promoted. And it really boggles my mind to think that, you know, last year it felt like, you know, we'd hit the ceiling, we'd reached the pinnacle, we were going up, we finally went home to the promised land. And now you go back to a year where um, we're having a more unexpected season in the Premier League. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't meant to be somewhere we were pushing sky high above mid-table. But for a team and the money that we spent this season, you expected us to do a lot better. But compare this to 2006 to 2010, 
You know, we were still at that sort of point where Aston Villa wasn't going anywhere. You know, it'd been a long time since we'd seen a um, a cup win. You know, from the days of um, Ron Atkinson, Brian Little, um, Graham Taylor. You know, we weren't winning any more trophies. And when Villa wasn't going anywhere, it really felt like we were just going to be another number to the Premier League. But when that com combination of Martin O'Neill and Randy Lerner came in, there was real hope in the year. You know, Sky Sports talked about this because they did a video on this exact situation. They said he was a dream team in heaven. Um, you know, and that idea that money was consistently being pumped into the club was really exciting, bringing in some new talent, new fresh ideas, and actually put a stamp on the Premier League and do something for once rather than being the just the Claret and Blue team from Birmingham that wasn't just gonna achieve anything. So it was nice to see, and it just felt like such a better atmosphere. It just felt like, you know, with Aston Villa, you couldn't write them off. They would pull off some amazing wins. I believe the 5-1 against Birmingham City, um, a 3-1 against Arsenal, wins against Tottenham, Man United. And not just the wins, the performances, they were massively better than what we see today. There was a lot of work rate, a lot of heart, a lot of passion, you know. Football at that time wasn't all about paychecks and wages. It was about just playing the game and having a lot of fun with it before it became the mass media coverage that it is today. Um, you know, Martin O'Neill's tactics at the time were very good. He embellished the idea of attacking style. He wanted his players to move forward at the pitch, be a threat against the opposition. That's what we were able to achieve with the players that we had. We were feeling dominant, feeling like, you know, any team was ours. And consistently being able to finish in League Cup finals. And again, that sixth place position, we were obviously able to play some great teams. As we've said, I remember um, Aston Villa playing Inter Milan. That's a, that's a fixture you don't think would have happened at Aston Villa in this time period. But it did. That's how, that just shows how good Aston Villa were at the time to be playing against some of the best European teams across the world. At Villa Park, I know for a fact it would have been a, a scene to behold. Um, so why do I love the Martin and Neil era so much? Simply put, when you go from, um, you know, watching those seasons, watching our great results, great fixtures, great players, great um, end products on the season. You then skip that forward to 2010 to 2015, where it was just a massive decline in player quality, um, results, fixtures, season placings. Um, yeah, it just really upset. June 2015 and 16 was just such a low point. Obviously, we got relegated that season. Um, it just never got good in the morning. It was the fact that we were saying goodbye to the Premier League in an FA Cup final, which... Um, Tim Sherwood managed to steer us towards in some very good results, playing against um, West Bromwich, Albion, Bournemouth, Liverpool. It was a very great time for Villa, and uh, the idea of going into the Championship with an FA Cup win would have been nice, but no, we would have to get battered 4-0 by Arsenal. Um, so to go from that, and, you know, and then to, obviously, three years in the Championship, the idea of the second season, that we're almost there, we're going to break through the ceiling, and then we would lose out to Fulham on the one goal thanks to Anna Hutton's lack of um, keeping his eyes on the ball. Um, you know, it was crushing. And then obviously we finally broke the glass in, as we said, and managed to make it to the Premier League. Um, and it's been it's just been a nice change in the atmosphere that was. But that was a year ago. And then we look at it now and Aston Villa aren't um, really doing anything. It looks like they'll be relegated multiple talks of the manager being sacked and replaced by John Terry or other sources. I believe um, just the other day, Slivo Milicevic, I can't pronounce his name exactly, but as we recorded this, there were links suggesting that he will be signing a contract to be the Aston Villa manager at the end of the season. Do I believe it? I don't know. We'll be going into it more detail in a transfer video, obviously. Um, but yeah, going back to it, you know, you go from 2006 to 10, a lovely period of football for Villa, to, I guess, now where it's just really disappointing. When we started the channel, it was just mainly negative match reviews, match reactions. I'd imagine back in then it would have been spontaneous, lovely match reactions to make us talking really positively for more than five minutes, not screaming and swearing our head off. Um, 
it's just such a nice time in our history because obviously me and Nathan were only born in the 2000s so we're not able to remember you know obviously the European championships we're not able to remember that period we're not able to remember winning league titles with Ron Atkinson seeing the great likes of um, Dennis Mortimer uh, Peter with um, Dwight York you know we're not able to see a lot of these players now but it really does make you appreciate what you have in football what your history of your club is because you know when it's tough times like this you really do miss the football um, so yeah for me, Martin O'Neill goes down as my favourite manager in the past. Um, well, I guess since I've been born, really. Simply put, it's just a good period of football that has been um, that's something that you can look back on and say that was a good time in our lives. I was able to be around in that time. I can say I was um, happy to be a Villa fan at that point. Because I've got to be honest, right now, I'm just not really um, a massive fan of Dean Smith. Even though we haven't had football for what feels like a really long time, um, you know, it's just, even then, it still doesn't feel natural with me for Dean Smith to be in the job. But I suppose we've got to let the season play out, see what's going to happen at the end, and hopefully Villa can change it around and keep it up. I think that's going to do it there for this video, guys. Um, I wanted to give you a bit of a different video rather than the football managers and try and have a bit more of these discussion videos. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As I said, I believe Martin O'Neill is one of the better managers we've seen. He's my personal favourite and I love the Martin O'Neill era. I'm going to put a poll just up here. You can vote on it whether you think Martin O'Neill era was um, one of the better ones we've seen. If not, tell us down below. You can tell us in the social pages. Obviously, give us your thoughts. Um, obviously, like and subscribe. Check out notifications. Check out fatalgrips.com. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching. Of the villa with the pride of villa. I'll see you later, boys. Check out my melody. Check out my melody. Check out my melody.